Hello, my fellow Freedom Builders, and welcome to this last episode of Stock of the Week here in 2019. My name is Hans Nielsen, and I am, as always, your guide here towards a more stable and solid financial future. We're going to look at Walt Disney today. A lot of, uh, of you out there have asked about uh, Walt Disney. And remember, if you have ideas for uh, the next Stock of the Week, write it in the comment section below the video here. We're going to look at Walt Disney today. And we're going to look at if it is a potential buy for my portfolio. Remember, this is not a stock recommendation for buying or selling. This is only and purely my take at the stock and you should always do your own research. What we're going to look at today is we're going to look at the qualitative fundamentals as always, some basic numbers, dividends. Uh, for those of you interested in that, we're going to look at what the insiders are doing kind of look at what the price is compared to where it should be uh, uh, with the value issues. Uh, we're going to look at some short-term views and of course at the price charts to see technically if it is a buy. All right, when we look at the qualitative fundamentals, um, Disney is a brand and I'm, I'm not sure it needs any introduction. People all around the globe knows Walt Disney and they have grown quite dramatically uh, in, in the years. They have been, uh, um, there have been a lot of acquisitions. They have been taking over the Pixar and the Marvel and um, a lot of, of different brands. And they are very, very strong indeed today. When I do an, an analysis like this, I always do my own analysis first. And then I start looking around on the internet to see, do people agree with me? And it's not always that they do. And right here in the Disney case, I must admit that I do not agree with uh, most of the analysis uh, out there or posted on the Internet. Because most of the Internet is actually quite positive towards Walt Disney. And uh, there are some different reasons. It's the strong brand. It's uh, growing dividends. And it is their new uh, Disney Plus, their new streaming service. And all of that is great. And I can... Uh, I can say already that I think Walt Disney is basically a great company, but I can also tell you that I'm not sure that I'm going to buy it. And let's have a look at why. First of all, a lot of the um, an, uh, analysts out there saying that uh, the Disney Plus is a great uh, asset for Disney. I completely agree. I love their, 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 the entire catalog of products they have. And when the Disney Plus comes to Denmark, I will be the first to buy it, definitely. But... We just have to remember that when looking at Disney, they also have a lot of other things that create revenue. And one of the things that most people are actually not aware of is this one. They have uh, somewhere, I've seen different numbers, somewhere between 25 and 30% of their revenue um, comes from, uh, I actually think it's a bit larger, uh, 20, 35%, around 35%, yes, comes from parks, experiences and products. And that means that they have about a third of their entire revenue stream that comes from Disney parks, Disney resorts, something called the Disney Vac Vacation Club, uh, Disney Cruise Lines, Adventures by Disney and so on. Actually, most of these brands I've never heard of here in Denmark, but I guess they are they are large around the world somewhere else. But here in Denmark, uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with it, I'm, I must admit. But that means that a third of their revenue comes from things that are not as easily scalable as a, an online streaming service is. Because what a lot of people focus on is how quickly Disney can scale their earnings on the different uh, online platforms they have. And that is actually true. But remember that a third of the revenue comes from streams as that is not easily scalable. Meaning that if you want to double the revenue stream from uh, Disney parks, you basically need to build uh, twice as many Disney parks as you have today. Of course, you can push the revenue a bit up in, in one single Disney park. But it's not like uh, like you can double the revenue. You, you need some more space. You need to build some more uh, parks. And that is very costly. So even though they are a strong brand, uh, just remember that a big part, a big chunk of the business here is actually not as easily scalable as uh, their Disney Plus and uh, ESPN and what the other uh, platform is called. All right. 
Um, but let's have a look at some of the numbers as we always do. And um, if we start here at Stockopedia, we can see that the quality rank is actually fairly okay. The quality rank is this from 1 to 99 rank where 99 is the best. And I like um, normally when I when I screen for, for stocks, I look for stocks with a quality rank above 70 and a stock rank uh, above 70. The stock rank is a weighted uh, total score of the quality, the value and the momentum rank. I'll put a link to Stockopedia below here. But just know that the quality rank is almost okay, but the stock rank is actually a lot lower than I would like it to be. Let's have a look at why that is. We can see that the PE ratio is above 25 in, in the forecast, in the estimates, and that is quite high. But that doesn't matter too much if the earnings per share growth is very high. But what we can see here is that, and I know for a large company like uh, Disney, an earnings per share growth of 10% is actually quite okay. But of course, it should be compared to what we are paying for the stock. And when we are taking, taking this PE ratio uh, growth here, and um, or the PE ratio forward and the earnings per share growth forward here, and divide them, we get a PEG ratio of 2.8. And that is too high for my likings, I, I must admit. I do like a PEG ratio at, at tops at 2. But I would like it down at 1.5, 1.7 or even lower. So already here we are seeing that we are actually paying a bit too much for the expected growth uh, for the next year and, and uh, in Disney. And I know a lot of value investors are looking at longer term uh, value in, and, are, and are seeing at, at uh, Disney at a five or ten years perspective. But what I'm looking at here is would I, would I like Disney to push one of my other stocks out of the portfolio? Because that is how you should always look at it. Maybe you say, well, Disney is a solid and good 10 year, 20 years investment. Yes, but what if they drop 30% the, the next year and I can buy it with a discount? Because with a 30% drop in price, Disney might uh, uh, actually be a, a good price stock. But right now, just by these numbers, I can see that it's a bit overpriced for me. We can see that the price to free cash flow uh, is 150. That is extremely high. And if we go down here, we can see that the Petrosky score is 3. That is way too low for my uh, for my strategy here. I will do a video about the Petrosky score uh, in, in a short while here in the new year. Um, you can look forward to that. That is a very uh, exciting uh, factor to look at. If you look at the total revenue, that is uh, growing. That is great. But we also need to see some growing uh, net profits. And that is a bit more stable compared to uh, what is estimated in, in the revenue. Meaning that they are uh, doing a lot of acquisition, they are developing new brands, they are developing the Disney Plus and that costs money and it creates revenue. But right now it doesn't seem like the next couple of years that it really hits the bottom line. What we can see here is that the earnings per share is kind of stable. It has been going up uh, here in the diluted normalized EPS. Um, it is kind of stable. It's not growing as much as I would like. Of course, there are some estimates here uh, around 9% and 13, 14% for the next couple of years. But in a couple of seconds, we will compare that to where the price is actually today. And uh, maybe that is not so uh, desirable after all. If you look at the operating cash flow, um, it has been going down, but that has something to do with their, uh, the, the way they have run their business and, and they are growing. And the free cash flow has also dropped quite dramatically here. But actually, it was on a good run up until uh, last year. They have the dividends and that is growing up. And that is something for you out there that are dividend investors, purely dividend investors. Uh, right now, it is not um, extremely high. They are down around 1.2, 1.3%. So that might be a bit too low for many of you. But they have been growing their dividends quite consistently. In 16, um, they, they fell. And in 15, they were up 110%. So the, the, the chart here is a bit skewed because of that. But it has been growing quite consistently. When we see the dividend cover, we, we can see that it is way above the two that I like, meaning that the earnings per share can easily cover the dividends. However, 
Um, normally, when we're looking at dividend cover, we are looking at how many times the earnings per share can pay for the dividend. But what we should remember is that we should actually, in my opinion, look a bit more at the free cash flow because this is the cash that they have in their hands to spend right now that they don't have to go out and sell stuff or borrow money. And right now here in 19, uh, the free cash flow uh, per share is 1.04 and they're still paying out $1.76 uh, in dividends, meaning that they don't have enough free cash flow to pay the dividends. And that is not really something I, I like, uh, I must admit. But let's see, the dividends are growing. So let's just hope that the free cash flow can grow as well. The net debt, uh, as you can see, is growing quite heavily here. And that is, of course, uh, because of the way they're developing uh, their business. Um, even though they're taking on some more debt, you can see that the interest coverage is actually quite good, meaning that they can uh, quite easily pay their short term interest here with their uh, with the stock they have or oh, sorry, with the cash they have, because uh, they do have uh, quite a lot of, of cash on hand. Um, Working capital doesn't look too well, but I'll get into these numbers in a later video to explain that a bit further. All right, that was just the basic numbers here. And even though they are not a complete catastrophe, they are not as desirable as I hear out on the internet looking at other people's analysis of the stock. I'm actually not that impressed here. If we go into Guru Focus, up here in the top, I didn't mention that in my last uh, at the video, but up here you can see uh, a lot of different valuation methods. So some people are looking at uh, discounted cash flow, earnings based, and some uh, on free cash flow based, and there's something called the Peter Lynch value method, and so on and so on. There, there's a lot of, of different value methods. And right now we have a price at around $144 uh, here. And these methods are actually projecting that this stock should be a lot lower based on uh, each of their uh, valuation methods. I will not go into depth with, with all of them here, but um, if you are a customer at Guru Focus, you can just uh, click on these and there'll be a thorough uh, explanation of what they are. As you can see, the profitability rank is, is great. Uh, the financial strength is not that great and the valuation rank is terrible. And that is also looking at all of these different ratios um, that are not looking too good. One thing that I like here as well, as you know, is looking, no, sorry, not the dividend, but the insiders, what they are doing. And what we can see here, and I should say on Guru Focus, they are only taking, as far as I can tell, they are, they are only taking the largest insiders, meaning the people really knowing something about the business. Because if we're looking at, for instance, um, at tip ranks here, when we're looking at the corporate insider activity, you can see that a lot of the insiders they are having here is something called uh, uninformative uh, here. And that, as far as I can tell, that means that it is not a high ranking, um, it's not a high ranking uh, employee in the business because there have been some buying and some selling over the last three months here. But if we look at the Guru Focus, we can see that this is the number of insiders. So there have been a lot of insiders selling. And if we look at the volume, it's not like it has been a huge volume, but still there has almost only been selling. We should go back until 17 here to uh, August 2017 uh, before we find some insider buys here. And that tells me yeah, well, maybe they just need the money, but it tells me that when a lot of, of large insiders are only selling, it tells me a bit about how they value the business as well. All right, let's have a look at what I talked about before, because here we are we are using the fast graphs here. And here we can see that over the last, well, since 99 or something like that, we have had an adjusted operating earning here in the greens here. You look at this one that is the same as this line here as you can see and we have had uh, on average around 11 percent per year over the last many many years but we're not we can't really use that for much because this is a lot of years ago so let's have a look at the 10-year rate we are down at uh, eight and a half percent and if you're looking at the five-year rate we're down at four percent on average here which is not uh, that good 
When we're looking at the estimates here uh, for 2020, they are actually projecting here. I'm, I'm not sure how many analysts are looking at this, but they're, they're looking at, at a, a negative um, rise in or, or drop in, in uh, the adjusted earnings here. And then from 21, 22, they're looking at 13 and, and 12 percent uh, in, in, in extra profit. But what we can do here is that we can go into forecasting and we can see Let's just look at the estimates for start. Um, here we can see that right now they're running with a uh, around a 24 in in uh, blended PE. And if we project that out in the future, if they can actually keep that um, and we are using the estimates down here, then over the next couple of years, even if they have if they, if they can keep the PE at 25, we'll only and this is price and dividends we'll only be making around 6% per year on this stock. And um, if we are looking at, let's just have here, uh, if we are dropping the the uh, the uh, CAGR a bit down, how much they will rise per year in, in adjusted earnings, we can see, let me just delete this one here, uh, we can see we are up here, but if they, over the next, let's say, two or three years, should drop down to where they actually historically should be with this uh, earnings growth, we should actually quite a lot out in the future before uh, the, the earnings justify the price around 145, 150. Because if we look at the historical charts here, we can see that on a historical basis, um, yeah, well, we can actually go 20 years back here, we can see that Disney has been very good at running around this um, uh, normal PE ratio around uh, the 18 here. They have been moving up and down around this PE ratio. And if we look at that, uh, and the normal PE ratio is 18, then we need to, or at least that's a theory, the price needs to come down to the blue line again. And what I like about this chart is that it combines the kind of technical analysis, or at least the, the price chart, it combines it with the historical development of the earnings, uh, earnings growth rate and the normal PE ratio. So let's just say that the normal PE ratio should be 18, or if we go down into a bit shorter time frame, yeah, well, it keeps there at uh, 18 over the last 10 years and 18 above uh, uh, is also the normalized over the last five years. So let's take a look at the forecasting here uh, and have a, a, a PE ratio of around the 18 that we say is the historical uh, normalized uh, PE here. If we should down to, uh, go down to that over the last uh, the next couple of years, we can see that we will actually end up losing money over the next two to, th two to three years. So what I'm saying with this is that I also love Disney and I do love all of the Disney Plus and I love the entire universe and I'm a big fan of Marvels and so on and so on. But you should not get your stock opinion cluttered by your opinion about the products. Because a company can have the best product in the world, but if they're not making money on it, basically the stock will drop. We can see here on the on the short uh, term here on, on the chip ranks, if we look at the stock analysis, it is kind of great. It is an eight. So I'm not saying that this cannot go up in price over the next month. It might actually. But and we can see the analysts are saying a strong buy and we can see that the blockers, uh, the hedge fund activity has been decreasing. Um, but uh, overall, it is quite OK what they're saying in here. But this is a shorter term uh, focus. If we're looking at the price chart over at TradingView, we can see here. Let's just remove this one. We can see here if you're looking at the weekly charts. Let's just make room for all of it down here. We can see that on my normal method, it is actually a um, it has just dropped down into what I call yellow zone. And what I mean by yellow zone is that for it to be in green zone, we need to have the RSI 14 weeks RSI above 50. That is OK. But we also need to have this one called comparative relative strength. That should be the, the thin gray line here should be above uh, the, the two moving averages here. And it is not. And what that tells us is 
that it has started that it has started to underperform the overall market and if we look at the price chart we can actually see a, a kind of a divergence here and what a divergence means here is that the price is going up um, not as fast as as before you can see here is a quite a steep rate and it is slowing a bit down here and what I'm afraid of that we will see over the last next months or something like this but let's see what the charts tells us but what you, you can see here is that the price is going up but the market is going up a lot faster meaning that if this one goes sides, sideways or actually starts to drop a bit down it, as it has been doing it means that Disney is not outperforming the market and what I want is stocks that on the long term uh, on, on the long time frame on the weekly time frame here uh, that it is capable of, of outperforming the S&P 500 if it can't do that I'm not interested in owning the stock because I know that a lot of people are saying, well, we are satisfied with making 10 or 12 percent in a given uh, year. Yeah, but if that year the, the entire stock market went up 30 percent, you're actually sitting with the kind of a loss if you have been investing in, in, in similar stocks in the market. So what we need is we need to perform as well as the market or outperform the market. And having a stock that starts to 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 stall a bit, it's not going up as fast. And we are seeing this going into yellow zone, meaning that the one is okay here, but the next one is not. Then a yellow zone stock I would not buy. It might be a buy. Let's just remove some of these. If uh, the stock drops down and they're coming some good uh, numbers, but if it can drop down to the bottom of this regression channel and start going up from somewhere around 130, it might be a bit better uh, valued, the, the stock. But right now, I'm not too impressed, and that is based on uh, the numbers from the Stockopedia, as you remember here. Um, it is based on the, the, the Guru Focus and the Insiders. It is based on the overall price compared to the, the earnings development over the last many years. Um, and this is what I base my, my decisions on. What I need from a company is actually to be in green zone before I buy it. Meaning that, for instance, uh, Disney gave me a green zone buy here at the uh, red arrow. So I could have bought it here and actually not gone out of it uh, up until somewhere around here. I might have been tricked out of it. So I might have made something like 20 or 30 percent over the last year here if I had uh, taken it and if the fundamentals were OK. But what I need is I need a green buy signals on my technical charts. And at the same time, I need the, the stock. Let's just have a look at it uh, just for the sake of it here and go back 20 years. Um, I need a, a price to be down here, meaning that it has fallen down. It is not uh, it is not too expensive compared to the earnings. And then I need to see a turnaround where I get my green buy signal. So I got uh, green buy signals uh, somewhere around here and somewhere around here and maybe somewhere around here as well. And I could buy it and keep it down from 20, 30, 40 dollars. And then up until I started to get a, a red sell signal up here around 100 because now it was overvalued and it gave me a sell signal. Then I might get some buy signals down here. But right now I might get a buy signal, but it is way too expensive compared to the earnings. So no, to those of you asking me, would I buy Disney? Is it an interesting candidate right now? Well, not for me. And if you're a dividend investor, well, it has been growing its dividends for some years, just one drop here. And now it's, it's going up again. But basically, uh, with a, a dividend yield of 1.22 and of course some risings, but I'm not sure if the cash flow can keep covering the, the, the dividend yield and the stock is as highly priced that it is right now, I will not buy Disney stock. It's not going to get one of the uh, spots in my portfolio because right now I would have to kick some other stock out of the portfolio. And uh, the other stocks I have in my US portfolio, they are way better priced and still in a green zone for a buy. So Disney will not kick one out of the 
portfolio right now. It's kind of these five tier challenges in X Factor or whatever they, it is called, uh, where uh, there's a singer coming up on stage and, and the judges need to decide, is this one better than the five I have placed on one of the chairs right now? And only if it is a, a, an extremely lot better than the five artists on the five chairs, then they are, they are giving a, a chair uh, to be in the finals. And right now we can look at it as this as a five or 10 or 20 chair challenge. And if I should buy Disney, it were to be better than the other stocks I have in my portfolio. And right now it is not, and I am not buying Disney. I am, however, subscribing to Disney Plus as soon as I can, but that doesn't change my opinion. No matter how much you like the brand, you should never let that uh, affect your, your objective decisions. If the numbers are not good enough, you should not buy it, no matter how much you like the brand. I hope that makes sense. That's all for now. This will, as I said, be the last stock of the week, week video here from uh, 2019. I will come, uh, come up with a little video more before New Year's Eve about uh, how far we've gotten this year and what I expect to be making of videos in the new year. So one or two videos you will see from me before uh, we are entering into 2020. But I will be talking to you soon and uh, I'll wish you a very Merry Christmas out there and uh, take care of your money. Talk to you soon. Bye.